Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We have the most dynamic guests on, and one of the most brilliant minds out there, as a believer as well, is Tex Mars. His latest book is Robot Alchemy. And uh, if you think this is sci-fi, if you think this is not real, if you think this is not the timeline of where our civilization is going, you're not paying attention. It's not just a sci-fi movie. These things have been researched for decades or longer. They've been written by people uh, a century ago, including H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, and many other books, uh, 1984, and uh, movies like Gattaca. Uh, the uh, real timeline and the plan of the globalists is far more malevolent, evil, and cybernetic than you can imagine. And to show that is this new book, Robot Alchemy, by Tex Mars. Tell us about the genesis of the book and give us some tidbits of uh, what's inside. Well, Dr. Bill, great to be on with you again, uh, as always. You know, a lot of the folks out there uh, know me from uh, other books, Codex Magica, Mysterious Monuments, and so forth. But right. they, they don't realize that actually I started out... Uh, in in the the robotics field, uh, right. in fact, uh, I, I'm author of several uh, robot books. Uh, per, the, in fact, I, I'm the <clears throat> author of the very first personal robot book. Uh, then I published the very first book on careers and jobs with robots. Uh, then I did a book uh, called The Great Robot Book. Uh, so, you know, I, I've, I've been off of that for many years. I've sort of kept up on the side, you know, sort of like a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but I've been I've been increasingly concerned because of the the militarization of robots. Well, even uh, the drones are a good example, and these are they're now planning on having to be autonomous and make an autonomous decision to make a kill decision. A- absolutely, and 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 then uh, you know, recently I I I said, you know, this robot thing. Is, is just becoming incredible. And the, the thing is, as you mentioned, uh, there, this is not science fiction. This is real. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think I began, I, well, I, I just flat out said, I'm going to have to do something about this to, to warn people. We, we need a little bit of time ahead here. I, I think, uh, you know, the future is just galloping ahead, and all of us are sitting here. We're, we're so worried about the cascade of events. Everything, you know, from Boston to Sandy Hook, it, it just seems like so much is happening right now. But I'll tell you, this is going to come up very fast, uh, uh, robots. Uh, and it's not, uh, you know, it, it's not, you know, the, 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 you know, the old clunky metallic robots. You know, they're, they're sort of lovable. Uh, remember the one uh, that was on Forbidden Planet? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just a... Sort of a lovable big, uh, big old galoot. Well, you know, that's not what we're really talking about. But we are talking about robotic human beings, even, uh, and, and under a uh, really a philosophy, but also it's it's coming to real life called transhumanism, right. the turning yeah, yeah. of human beings into cyborgs. Yeah, uh, exactly. The transhumanization. Now, now, and that, this is very real, by the way. The brain interface chips, you know, as I say, in the future, and we won't put a date on it, the kid will be saying, hey, well, Johnny had that, that he got his brain interface chip, Dad, and now he's on the supernet, and he's got an IQ of 5,000, and he's exploring the cyborg world and all these new planets and knowledge, and he's been able to, to conquer 20 languages in just five days, Dad. Why can't I get it? <laughs> Exactly. They're they're going to they're already experimenting about putting uh, encyclopedic chips uh, in human brains. So, right. uh, you know, this probably will uh, do away with the formal educations. Uh, they just download it, or or, or you exactly. literally translate translate. The problem is, it's also you tr- you literally can download, like say, existing memories or skill sets, including athletic, into another person's brain. Whose brain really is it? I mean, at some point. Uh, the chunks of your web, quote, the very nature of what you are, isn't learned or created by effort, but literally downloaded directly into your cortex. So these skill sets are things you've imported. All of these things are, are I would, I would call them unintended consequences. But I believe right. many of them are are, are are consequences that are that are planned for our future. Uh, they right. they want to, they want a new human being, one that does not rebel, one that does not resist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so they can do that now. They can engineer, uh, you know, we would call it psychosurgery, but 
really it's just a, a putting a neural implant in the brain. Uh, and so with the, uh, we're talking about reality here. You know, uh, Vernon Inge, who was a, a well-known uh, mathematician from California, wrote a book some years ago, and he invented a term called singularity. Singularity. Yes. Uh, uh, and Vernon Inge said this. He said that uh, it, it now is about 15 years from today, 2013. Uh, he says uh, the development of robotics, cyborgs, uh, you know, androids and so forth, will develop so rapidly uh, that that in about 15 years from now, we will reach the era of singularity. That's when the robot will be more intelligent than human beings. Then, he said, the human era will be ended. Now, think about that. In, in yeah. just 15 years from now, the human era will be ended. That, that's, well, I'm gonna, that's, I'm gonna, you said, well, close he, the... was, he was a... He, surely he didn't mean that. Surely that's yeah. not true. Tex... Uh, what, what if, what if, uh, I'm just going to propose this, but what if 10 years ago, 2003, that singularity was already reached, but it's an occult, a very highly classified project that's involved with a virtual world project called, in the movies, The Matrix, but it exists. What if that uh, artificial intelligence is already combing and connecting all databases on Earth in a virtual world? What if that database uh, manager is as in, is intelligent as a superior human being, but operates at 150 trillion times faster uh, in terms of thought, has a perfect memory, and has absolute control not only of the of the uh, databases, but also of interfaces to real things such as power networks, uh, backup power for nuclear reactors, uh, able to actually interface even with uh, defense systems in multiple countries. Uh, what if that actually already existed? Well, you know, are you, are you, are you going to tell me it existed? It, it might because... Uh, you know, I have not been able to discover that at this point. In, it's in my not, book, it's not it, a might, actually. In two, I, back in the in 90s, I took care of one employee that was for six years, but uh, others for two years, uh, at the Virtual World Project at Shreve Air Force Base. And their plan was by 2003 to have that system operational because they worked out a system of stochastic neural net modeling that modeled human thought patterns and were able to create a superior human being, in a sense, like a genius level, uh, but now able to literally acquire, just almost like uh, that Star Trek movie years ago, or show where, you know, they had reached some kind of field effect and it caused someone to have literally an expanding, almost infinite intelligence. Uh, right now, if you had a system like that, you'd have literally a, a beast computer that would literally have absolute omniscience of everybody in cyberspace. And as soon as you control their sim, you control them, which is why there's a rush toward biometric IDs, a rush toward everything in a database, uh, because this system does exist. I, I saw some three whistleblowers recently from the National Security Agency trying to pretend that at some future they may be able to hack in and create a database in every American, and that's bad. Uh, excuse me, they've done that for over 30-some years. So the idea that your phone, fax, emails, Twitter has not been totally monitored by the government and by these artificial intelligence systems is hogwash. They have the gallium arsenide quantum teraflop supercomputers and the gallium arsenide uh, quantum computing uh, Cray-5 has a computing capacity of 100,000 Cray-4s. And well, it's that's already incredible, isn't it? Well, they already have it. So when they say that China or Japan has these super, the biggest supercomputer, it's just smoke and mirrors. Mm. The systems exist exclusively in America. Well, we have plenty of money to do it, don't we, with DARPA? Yeah, exactly. Infinite budgets. Dove Zockheim disappeared with 2.3 trillion to 9-11 alone for, for the Pentagon, and that was chump change. Welcome back. Well, the back cover of your book is quite telling. Uh, text it says, "Come and take a thrill excursion across the robot galaxy." Some since time immemorial, humans have sought to build artificial creatures that move and talk. You will see and discover many of these fantastic cre uh, creations in this book. Uh, but you will also see depicted a startling future in which science and alchemy 
turn everything upside down. Robot life thrives. The machines conquer the workday world, and humanity shrinks before the advance of a superior life form. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, the latest movie, Oblivion, is a good example, though, to, to, talking about the storyline. It's about a super intelligent, if you want to call alien, cybernetic life form. And what they really want to do is convert the remaining humanity to what I call uh, Homo cyber sapiens. Mm. Uh, but where you basically are, you're, you're, in a sense, you're, you're connected to a quote a global mind, so you're not really an individual anymore. Uh, you're in a connected, uh, literally real network, uh, and uh, you are just like the first contact, you know, one of many. Uh, yeah, well, you know, the Borg actually is being created now by the U.S. Army. So right. that you know, the whole army division, for example, will see the same theme. <clears throat> they'll 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 understand the same you know things. They'll they'll think the same. And, and you know, you say, well, this is just great, you know, uh, but it, it's it's not at all when you when you think. Do you really want to think like your fellow man does? I mean, think of the uh, the immorality, the evil in the world. Uh, <laughs> is this what we're going to think? But you know, there, there there's there's so much here. DARPA is being uh, used. Uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, uh, they're spending billions of dollars for such projects as hunter-killer robots. Yeah, These, these are robots yeah. that can identify uh, through facial recognition uh, software uh, and other means, even by smell, they can identify certain human beings, let's say in a, in a huge uh, auditorium or stadium, uh, go right to that you know, individual and kill him or her. Right. The hunter killer and, robots. Now you know at the uh, at the beginning of the Gulf War II, they had six of these swords or operational counter killer robots. Uh, how many do you think they had at the end of the war? This is a classified source on this. They had twelve thousand plus. Mm. Mm. And these counter were some of them were ground based, some of them were drones in the air, but they were basically these robots could do a kill shot at, at your head at two and a half miles accurately, or hit you with a taser bolt or directed energy weapon, including tunable sideband terahertz frequencies that could stimulate apoptosis of your cells, causing auto-digestion of your tissues and a disseminated intravascular coagulopathy that causes your body to bleed to death and dissolve your tissues by auto-digestion. And right. people say, no, no, they don't have these weapons. They say uh, Iraq was a laboratory. It was the laboratory of Iraq. Well, you know, Americans really don't know the full story of Iraq to this day, do they? Uh, I, no. I mean, now now we're having Iraq <clears throat> just fall apart. Uh, but we do have there around 80,000 uh, civilian mercenaries all being paid for by the U.S. government. So when they tell you, well, we don't have troops there anymore, of course, yeah, right. we do have yeah. troops, but we mainly have mercenaries, and they're guarding the, uh, the pipelines uh, from uh, Iraq uh, on over to Israel and the Mediterranean that, that end up in Red China. And yeah, so Red, Red China is getting... All the oil uh, that that's been in the newspapers quite a bit. Even the New York Times talked about China getting the bulk of Iraqi oil. Uh, so our, that, our our treasure and our young people uh, die or get dismembered and get PTSD and brain injuries. So the Chinese get the oil. That's a that's an interesting uh, uh, balance sheet, there, isn't it? it? It is, and here's the whole point: China is getting Iraq oil. Uh, they're bringing it to China on the Mediterranean there, uh, out of Israel and southern Lebanon. Uh, BP is assisting with the Chinese oil company uh, in bringing up the oil from Iraq. And it's being uh, brought out of the ground at $2 a barrel. That's, that's all China, Red China, is paying for the oil. $2 a barrel. I believe this is intended to build up Red China. So oh, yeah. Red China, of course, gets oil for $2. What is it on the world market today? Ninety-three to a hundred dollars. Uh, that's an amazing profit by Red China. You yeah, know, well, of course, this, it's the globalists behind Americans them. Americans don't understand, but it's also the reason why Secretary of the Treasury Henry Paulson, under George W. Bush as president, made over seventy-three trips to Red China. Yeah. All of this was yeah. being set up. So Red China, you know, is totally. Uh, yeah, their economy is based on oil now, and not on all these products that they're they've been shipping around the world. They're not selling a lot of products because of the uh, the uh, the recession that's been going on since 2008. But they are selling a lot of oil. That's why they they have built all these new re uh, refineries in China. And by the way, Japan 
uh, has to pay uh, uh, China ten dollars for so many cubic feet, whatever the measure is. I, I, I forgot it now, but they measure it by cubic feet. Ten dollars per uh, number of cubic feet for natural gas, right? Uh, because you know they can't use uh, nuclear. Uh, 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 plants anymore, so right, they've so all converted natural to natural gas. gas. Ten dollars right. um, uh, is being paid to Red China. If they could buy that from America, it would be wonderful, because well, we're selling it for two dollars. But but the Obama administration well, refuses it, yeah. to give a license to United States companies. So so Japan has a contract uh, with uh, Chesapeake, I believe it is. Uh, uh, an American company, but it's uh, so far not been allowed to use that contract. So can you imagine, yeah. imagine ten dollars they're charging the Japanese versus America, and we've got so much natural gas that we can't use it all. We're we're, we're closing wells right now today. It, it, exactly. Yeah, In fact, it, it's uh, just an the, astonishing the, thing. The liquid night natural gas was a contract that one company in the Bakken was going to fulfill all the Japanese needs at five and a half dollars, <laughs> and the yeah. Obama administration blocked it just a few months ago. Uh, this is obscene at the extreme, and uh, right now most well, people don't realize China is our, our ally. You see, against yeah, North Korea not. and so forth. By the way, BP was involved with getting oil and materials and petrochemicals to North Korea through China during the Korean War. You know that, mm -hmm. right? No, I didn't yeah. know that. No, I, I can't. Yeah, they were involved. That, so. they, they were, they, yeah, there was a previous name for it, but it's the same British Petroleum Company that was doing that. So uh, they didn't have uh, petrochemicals, oil, and, and other materials, but they got them all through BP. Wow. The well, that's a Roth, that, that is a Rothschild owned uh, corporation, BP. Well, China is a Rothschild owned corporation, too. Well, you know, China has long been. Um, well, a lot of people don't know, but uh, Sidney Shapiro and. Uh, a guy named Epstein, uh, they control the media and the the, uh, the banks and the finance, two Jews, uh, very wealthy Jews, uh, of Red China. I, I mean, in right. Mao Zedong, put one of them is charge of the media, the other one is charge of the banks and finance system. So the Jews were running um, the, the, the banking and, and the media, all of the newspapers and so forth, uh, of Red China. Today, of course, many of uh, in the West, you know, are over there, uh, even Maurice Strong has a mansion in Beijing. He was former uh, head of the environmental program uh, at the United Nations. So we have a, a real ancestral relationship with Red China. And I, as I talk about in my video, Die America Die. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and these um, globalists have totally created China right out of thin air. And they manage it, including uh, Carlisle Group, etc. Yeah. It's amazing. Back in a moment with Tex Mars. Welcome back. And uh, some people might not think that prophecy is important. I think prophecy is the key not only to uh, evangelizing in this time, the time of the end. And if anybody doesn't think it's the time of the end, you just have to read the book of Daniel. It says, close up and seal the words of this book to the time of the end. Uh, one of the scriptures in the Revelation was, and they gave a uh, voice, and they gave literally life, was breathed into the image of the beast, and it spoke. And, of course, this image of the beast managed the cashless system, managed basically the cybernetic model of everybody on earth. So I believe what you talk about in the cover of your book, an avatar that controls a planetary kingdom of machines, is in fact uh, in operation and being revealed in steps but right now. We see it with the drones being deployed in America. I mean... Uh, we see it with this movie, Oblivion, where, uh, you know, the Avatar arrives in space uh, and uh, creates a whole drone culture to kind of wipe out humanity, managed by uh, a, basically, I'll blow the storyline, but managed by thousands of copies of two astronauts that were sent out into space and got captured by this Avatar. They tried to tell everybody that the war was won by humans, but in fact the Avatar took over and considered the human beings scavs or scavengers uh, and had drones everywhere killing them. Mm. So uh, well, that uh, we're moving towards something that's very awful uh, and not very far away. Yeah, no no one is really thinking of this. This That's the reason I wrote the book. Uh, no one is really contemplating what is going to happen uh, w when uh, we reach singularity. Uh, and the Defense Department, of course, is spending billions of dollars that we don't know anything about. 
Uh, it's sort of interesting. One of the uh, top roboticists in the world is a man named Ray Kurzweil. Right. Uh, and uh, I've been reading about uh, Kurzweil for, well, even <clears throat> 35 years or so. Suddenly he turns up. He is now the chief or the director of development at Google. He's at yeah, Google. At Google yeah, yeah. yeah, Ray Kurzweil is, is now at, at Google. Uh, so, you know, uh, whether it's Google or Microsoft, all of these people are into these things. But uh, they're getting uh, billions of dollars from our own federal government. Uh, I, I think w what is happening now, we're, we're going to implant super intelligence in these uh, in robotic creatures, and we're going to give, uh, make them part of the Borg. They're going to link the brains together, neural networks, as you well mentioned it uh, being called. Yeah. And, and all of these will be linked together, the drones. There will be swarms of, of, of drones. Uh, I, I talked with a roboticist a good friend of mine who written a number of books. Uh, this was many years ago, Dr. Bill, um, and uh, I, I, he had called me on something, and I said, hey, uh, what are you doing right now? What are you, what are you working on? What book are you, you writing on? This is when we both wrote the uh, robot books. Uh, and he said, well, I'm not writing a book. And he was very, very reluctant. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> he said, well, I'm working in Virginia. Uh, does that give you any hint? I, yeah, Langley. Uh, yeah. Langley. yeah. I, I said, well, uh, yeah. He said, you know, uh, boy, I'd, I'd really like to tell you what I'm doing. I'm working on a special project. I was recruited with a, a bunch of scientists and engineers. He said, well, let me just tell you, let me ask you this. What if you could take a robot and make it so tiny that it was, you know, you, you couldn't sit even with your naked eye, and then you were to inject it into human beings? So I said, you mean like Fantastic Voyage, you know, that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, exactly. I said, yes. I said, well, he said, well, we're doing something like that. But I can't say anymore. It's it's uh, all uh, classified. Well, he, he told me enough right there, you know. Uh, they, they were uh, into nanorobots. Uh, and, and here they were injecting uh, human victims, you might say, or subjects. Uh, with nano robots, uh, now they can put these in the brain uh, in, into your uh, excuse me into your body uh, with a with a with a needle, and bingo! You know, at any given time, they can cause your heart to explode, your brain to to implode, and, and so you know you're 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 a walking dead person. You don't even know it. So th this is the kind of uh, things that they have now. And by the way, that was uh, let's see, that was about 1990. So that's uh, 23, 25 years ago uh, when this gentleman told me that. So it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy, hey? Yeah, yeah, it really is. By the way, one of the robots that the military has developed is called, listen to this now, Dr. Bill, the Eater robot, the Eater robot. And the reason they call it Eater uh, is because it can actually, you know, instead of gas and oil and instead of a combustion engine, uh, it... it it is driven uh, by uh, uh, biomass. You know, they can they can take sticks, uh, leaves, or get this: actual bodies of dead human beings and feed it to the robot, and it will live on. Now that's that's yeah. <laughs> that's a it's sort of like a, you know Twilight or one of these. Uh, so we got a new term for it. Then we're going to call it a zombot. It, it's a, exactly. They should have called it the zombie, but they call it the eater robot. It can it can live on dead human bodies. So you know, right. out in the field, uh, if you're killing people uh, in in some place, well, you know, don't worry. You're going to have plenty of fuel. It'll just go along and eat up all the human bodies that are there. This is grotesque for human beings to think uh, of instruments like this, but they are real. Uh, the eater robot is real. You can Google it up. Uh, but I, but I think it's it, it just we're talking about the level of the fantastic right now. Yeah, and it's it's in some ways, as I mentioned on the break, it's not in the future. It's already happened. Uh, so many things haven't been fully revealed. Uh, one of the things that happened in, in October of 1998, I had done a talk at the old church that Catherine Coleman did at a conference, evangelism conference for uh, the Prophecy Club <clears throat> back in 1998. For about 90 minutes, I took over the conference when. Uh, Jonathan, the uh, evangelist, was South Africa was sick, so I uh, took over the conference. And afterward, one of the guys that 
was in the audience said he was a senior scientist at Lockheed Martin, so he wanted to meet me in Lodo a few days later. So I met him in a cafe, and he actually gave me the patent for uh, the systems that they were developing for the Mark of the Beast. And uh, the fact is, I, I was an employee at uh, for the St. Francis Hospital Seacom, and without you know cutting the story a little short, I've actually been inside the actual quantum array at Street Air Force Base underground, miles down, uh, for the actual virtual world project of the matrix supercomputer, the central node. Now, there's other nodes of it in England and elsewhere around the world, all connected. And these other database acquisition sites, like the new one being built in Utah, 3 million square feet, is basically just a, if you call it a big vacuum or suction, to pull in data from everywhere, call it and pre-process it before it goes to these supercomputers. Why spend so much money on these projects? It's because they've created a cybernetic copy of Earth and they want to have drones to monitor us and feed more data to this giant machine. Uh, so they'll have literally everything. They'll, they'll be able to look through the side of your house, know where you're in your bathroom or your kitchen. Uh, they'll be able to check your GPS coordinates on your cell phone, even if it's turned off. They can track it. People aren't aware of that. Uh, every phone, fax, and email has always been analyzed, not just recently. It's always been analyzed. By you know, you know Dr. Bill, it, 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 this has all occurred in our lifetimes. Just, right. You know, yours and I, uh, mine. And right. so you, you can understand the, the the technology that we're now acquiring. Um, you know, when, when the right. iPhone came out just a few years ago, I was just amazed. You know, here's an entire computer uh, in the palm of your hand. They can access the whole world. Uh, and, and, of course, you know, now we have uh, even more than that. Uh, but we, we've got 3D machines. Uh, when I was uh, researching robotics, uh, I, I read of, of some guy who uh, has created a sort of a home-type robot that will move about by computer and do things. And he says, I have decided to give the whole world a gift of my robot. If you've got a 3D printing machine, you can print out my robot. Now think well, about that. So, you know, uh, there are 3D printing machines. That's a new industry. Uh, that you can literally, it's like the old teletransporter, like Dr. Spock gets in and, you know, he's sent yeah. somewhere. Um, it, it's like the replicator on the Star Trek. The printer is. Yeah, it's like the replicator on Star Trek. They don't need to have yeah. a storage system for food. They just replicate it from energy. Yeah, that's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, uh, it, it, it looks good, but it's really bad. Back in a moment with X Mars. Robot Alchemy, the latest book. You want to get it? Be back in a moment. Welcome back. Uh, so, people say you're just trying to scare people. No, we're trying to evangelize you. We want you to know that God's not nervous. That's why he put it in the book of Revelation through the prophet uh, John. He put it in through many scriptures in Old and New Testament. And all of it's written for our time. Uh, it's not written for people 100 years from now or 1,000 years ago like the preterists. It's written for us. And in fact, it says that there will be a overall supercomputer avatar that will literally control a planetary kingdom of machines as a proxy, the beast machine, if you want to call it, isn't just a single machine. It has a central node or primary brain, which is at Shriver Air Force Base, uh, Falcon, Colorado. Now, how does Deagle know that? Well, uh, I won't give all the details, but I had a supernatural visitation uh, back in October of 1993. And by July 1994, I actually walked through the same facilities as I was brought by that uh, supernatural visitor. Uh, and I was given security clearance at a Q level, which means I saw and worked with some of the most advanced projects that you can imagine. And not secondhand, but firsthand. And because I have a very good memory, I was able to often have people visiting me to find out what was going on in parallel projects because you had to follow your little green, red, or purple line to your specific building or room, and you had all kinds of biometric uh, security clearances to your, you get to even facility and go to usually locked down for a month. <clears throat> these uh, workers so I got to know basically some of the most awful things in history mm -hmm. and uh, they are, this, this is all planned and the central new financial system they're going to erect after they crash the current one which I think is in the works um, is a cashless system that's based on biometrics 
and that's coming. And people say, no, it's not moving to the mark of the beast. I'm sorry to tell you, uh, you know, our victory is in Jesus. It's not in the idea that we're, he says, how long shall it be holy and true to the people? The holy people are crushed. And in the book of Daniel, it talks about above the river Eli. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, Elu. Uh, the angel told Daniel that uh, it would be a times, times, and half a time. So that means there would be a period of 1260 days of Hebrew days uh, where the truth would go forward from the Jewish sacrifice starting on the Temple Mount uh, until the holy people were crushed and the sacrifice was cut off and Christians and Jews died by the millions. That's where we're heading. And yeah, the people we really, in America, we really, we really are. That, that's. That's why I wrote this book, Robot Alchemy. You know, al- right. alchemy is a is a very unusual word that means witchcraft or uh, yeah. s- uh, occult secrets. Yeah, uh, and and that's really what this really is. Uh, right. You, you know, they're building yeah. life uh, out of inanimate objects. Uh, right. And and it's and it's uh, and it really is. You know, I mean, let's face it; these things are alive. They're putting in the life that they want them to have. It, you know, I, I was recently reading. This is what really made me decide to write this book. At right. Foxconn, which is the largest corporation in the world in Red China. Right. Now, Fox, Foxconn, Foxconn makes things for General Electric. It makes all the Apple iPhones. Uh, I, I mean, it makes stuff for you know all these American companies. Uh, and right. they have these huge plants, uh, Dr. Bill. At one plant, there are 420,000 workers. Now, these they treat them like just worker bees. I mean, like they, they treat them like drones. Uh, to use high, word again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the, the working conditions are pitiful. They work six to seven days a week. Uh, they make a pittance. Uh, and, and they don't have safety they, either. When they're using grinders with aluminum dust, they can have an aluminum dust explosion. And they've had them there. They have so many suicides. They put nets so that if they try to jump exactly. off the roof, that is exactly they, they had to put suicide. nets around the perimeter of all the buildings because so many employees were going to the top of the buildings and and committing suicide by jumping off. Right. So, so that, that's the, the the situation. Now, the head of Foxconn, this uh, Chinese uh, uh, CEO, got so angry at the workers, if you could imagine, that he was mistreating. He got so angry at them. That he decided to bring in robots. He said, I can replace you people with robots. Now, Foxconn has four million workers. Uh, he says, I'm going to bring in four million robots. And the, he, he has brought them in. They call them Foxbots. Uh, and, and they've already got 10,000 robots in their factories. So uh, Apple, uh, seeing what these robots could do, um, Stephen Cook, the new head of Apple, you know, uh, what's his name, died. Uh, Stephen Jobs. Just, so uh, Jobs, Mr. Yeah. Cook said, well, we can do that in America. He's going to build an Apple plant uh, in California that uses almost nothing but robots. So joblessness, right. I and mean, we haven't seen anything yet. All This robot revolution is just beginning. We oh, see yeah. what happened with auto manufacturers. They're right. going to uh, bring back jo- uh, not jobs, but all the manufacturing to America, but it's going to be done by intelligent machines right and that's it's not happening be, uh, right now your, in average middle class the only job still will be lower paid make jobs under 30 hours a week because obamacare will not force the employer to pay for health insurance so they're not going to employ anymore so you have to have two part-time jobs to be equal to one because of obamacare employers everywhere are looking for ways to cut out human beings they're just you know we're just a production cause we're useless eaters right. And uh, right. the the believe me, the McDonald's, the Burger Kings, they're looking for robots to come in, and you're going to find you know the kitchens are going to be automated. Everything uh, there'll probably be just a voice there, just like the, you know when you call somebody now, there's always a machine voice. You probably go up and it'll be a machine voice that says, "What? How can I help you today?" It's going to be a, a robotic device. So we're going to see that in the future. Uh, in every way, things are going to change. But where are they going to employ all the millions of us that are going to be laid off of work in the next 10 to 15 or 20 years? It's an amazing uh, they're not, thing. They're not going to employ them. They're going to basically inter them. Well, that's, <laughs> I think there's a reason why uh, you know Janet Napolitano of the Homeland Security Department 
has ordered the you know two billion is it uh, hollow shell bullets? Right. Well, I, we were talking about this yesterday with the timeline with Lowell Ponte, and Dr. Mike Kaufman. Uh, this is what I suspect. It's not prophetic, and if it, if I had a prophetic word, I'd say it. But my analysis is number one: the most likely event to happen is a parallel. Uh, avian flu plague with the collapse of the bond market and the economy. Mm. And that's likely to happen about a 90% chance in the next two years. Well, uh, the, Fed Reserve, the Fed Reserve now is, is propping up everything with, with, uh, yeah, it, with it, you know, money out of thin air. Funny money. Yeah, we, well, we, they, we do they know want, that they, they want, know they want to collapse. That's now being admitted on Wall Street. They're basically well, saying, get in now. Uh, while the getting is good, the market well, is flying high, all well, because the, the Fed is pumping it up. With fake money, but they're also pushing people out of their savings account, trying to frighten people with Cypriotization in Cyprus. And the Canadian government put it in their 2013 budget, and it was in the Dodd Frank bill that your uh, bank account is now an unsecured investment in the bank and can be bailed in. And the whole idea is to force people into the stock market. So when they crash the stock market, like in 1929, which the banks do, they will steal all your money, not just some of it. So yeah, what I see yeah, coming, I, I, you know, they, yeah. obviously Cyprus. What happened in Cyprus to the people? Uh, you know, that was it only involved about nine billion dollars, but it was a showcase trial, wasn't it? Yeah, it was to frighten everybody else in Europe and the Western world, so that they would frighten them out of the bank account. And then they tried to frighten people out of gold, but people were smarter. They realized there's only paper gold they dropped, so their people are buying up a thirty to fifty percent plus premium to buy physical gold and silver. So, Isn't that strange uh, we're, we're, now that, that uh, yeah. gold is being sold out everywhere, the physical gold, uh, but the stocks and the uh, ETFs are all going down, down, down? Well, that's what we can expect is a disjunction between yeah. the two. So that's number one. Number two, I expect that the uh, the uh, the ISON comet uh, will cause a major superstorm on the sun that will strobe the earth in the southern hemisphere this coming November and wipe out South American crops and, and to knock out a lot of their electrical grid and satellites and probably have some effects on it. But we're heading into a worldwide major famine. That's the well, next it's, uh, it's major a, it's a It's a man-created famine uh, right. it, being, being created yeah, and for it, us. It's, it's also a famine of what I call the seeds of, of famine, which are GM seeds that you can't replant. And by the, the, you know, if you try to replant them, you get less and less crops until eventually they, they completely don't reproduce. Uh, but some of these newer seeds are even made to be aluminum-resistant for the nanoparticles are put in the upper atmosphere. So uh, basically, they're conspiring for mass global genocide. And, uh, I, I do pray that people will get robot alchemy. They will be yeah, shocked how do they get at it? what they read. By the way, it has hundreds of color photographs in it. And how do they get it, uh, Tex? Your website is? Yeah, our, Power, our website uh, is powerofprophecy.com. Powerofprophecy.com. We need, to get, we need to continue this dialogue in, in a week or two uh, and regularly because you have so many amazing books. At Power Prophecy, your newsletter, your tapes, you do your homework. Well, thank Again, you, I consider I'll, you I'll have really a, care. You, you have an apostolic ministry that's essential for people to know at the time of the end. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. Take care. We'll be back in a moment with hour number two, Emil de Toffel, SEMF, and Dr. Bill Pollack. Then hour three, amazing author, Victor Thorne, Conspiriality in the New World Order, Assassins, third book, back in a moment.